Hi guys, my name is Kaylee Stem, and I'm a second year Master's of Occupational Therapy student at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. The topic I've chosen for this in-service presentation is emotional intelligence. I learned a lot about this while preparing for this presentation, and I hope you guys can learn something to take with you as we start Level 2 fieldwork and beyond. So our learning objectives for today's session are for the learner to list three or more characteristics of emotional intelligence and to identify one or more ways they will actively seek to improve their emotional intelligence. So first off, what is emotional intelligence? The article by McKenna and Melson states emotional intelligence is the understanding, perception, use, and management of emotions of self and others. Additionally, emotional intelligence supports the development of professional and therapeutic relationships and helps to develop and apply an individual's person-centered and holistic principles. Emotional intelligence considers how much an individual can recognize understand, process, manage, monitor, and utilize emotional information. I know that sounds a little complicated still, so we're going to watch a video explaining emotional intelligence that I found to be really helpful. Emotional intelligence refers to the ability to recognize, interpret, and process emotions in yourself and others. While genetics, upbringing, and environment all play a role. There are steps you can take to develop your emotional intelligence over time. Get to know yourself. Emotionally intelligent people are self-aware. They have a realistic appreciation of their strengths and weaknesses and how they come across to others. Peer feedback is one way of improving your self-awareness and may uncover a few of your emotional blind spots. Learn your triggers. Linked to the notion of self-awareness is knowing how you are likely to respond in particular situations. Think about how you felt the last time you were under pressure. Did these feelings help or hinder you? Recognizing emotions and the source of these emotions can shift your emotional state. Empathize. Seeing things from someone else's perspective will help you understand their values and beliefs. This is important when it comes to motivating and engaging others. Make a conscious effort to get to know your colleagues. Ask open questions and actively listen to what they have to say rather than simply waiting for your turn to speak. Be on the lookout for body language and other non-verbal signs, as these may tell you more than someone is willing to express out loud. Own your emotions. Part of being emotionally intelligent is about taking responsibility for the way you interact with others. If someone upsets you, Pause and reflect on why their actions led you to feel this way, instead of reacting impulsively. Recognize that a conversation is a two-way interaction, and it takes two people to make you angry, sad, or frustrated. Go with your gut. Finally, listen to your body. If your stomach starts doing backflips every time you speak to a senior manager, or your muscles tense up before you go into a meeting, what does this tell you? Counterintuitive as it might seem, emotions can be a valuable source of information when making rational decisions at work. Remember, emotional intelligence isn't about suppressing emotions. It's about learning how to recognize, process, and channel them in a way that benefits you and your team. Enhancing your emotional intelligence requires effort, but it can be achieved with sustained practice. I hope you have a better understanding of emotional intelligence now after watching that video. I would now like you to pause the video and take the emotional intelligence quiz on the mindtools.com website. It's short, only 15 questions, 
and once you finish, you can use the chart below the quiz to interpret your score. You can also review the site to find additional tips and ways to improve your emotional intelligence, but we're going to talk about that more in depth a little bit later. So there are five characteristics of emotional intelligence according to psychologist Daniel Goleman, and the first one is self-awareness, the next self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. The MindTools website has great information on this topic and how to improve your emotional intelligence in each of these five areas, and I'm going to discuss now ways to improve in each area. So for self-awareness, you can practice mindfulness, ask for feedback from others, understand your strengths and weaknesses, keep a journal to record experiences, and how you felt in that moment. Next is self-regulation. You can recognize um, what triggers your emotions, both positive and negative. Deep breathing. This will just help calm you down and help you regulate your emotions when you're stressed. Take a moment also before responding to emails that may frustrate you. Otherwise, you could regret what you said, and it could have been your emotions that were leading you to say that, and it might not have been actually how you felt. Also, anxiety and stress management. And also, it's important to take responsibility for your actions and emotions. The next one is motivation. You can develop or improve your self-discipline. And you can also set goals, both short and long term, for your personal and professional life. And it also said to celebrate your accomplishments, both big and small. Those are both wins and ways to keep you motivated. Next is empathy. So imagine yourself in someone else's shoes, use active listening, and watch the person that you're interacting with. Watch their body language because that could tell you a lot more than what they're actually verbalizing to you. And the last one is social skills. So help and work on building trust with others and learn how to deal with conflict effectively in a healthy manner. Build self-confidence, and if you're not a people person, start small, then gradually expand to larger groups, and this will help your confidence and also build your social skills along the way. Now, I would like you to pause the video and write down a few characteristics of an OT with emotional intelligence. So, some of the characteristics that I wrote down were someone that is motivated, someone that's genuine, someone warm, optimistic, empathetic, a good listener, persistent, and resilient. These are all things that come to mind when I think of an occupational therapist who is very emotionally intelligent. Now I'm going to discuss the importance of emotional intelligence and how it can help us as OTs in a few different areas. So first, I'm going to discuss with our clients and their families. As OTs, our ability to understand and manage the emotions of ourselves and our clients definitely has an impact on our effectiveness with these clients and their families. Building rapport is so important to have with our clients and their families. That way that we can be effective in our treatment. We talk about the therapeutic relationship all the time and how significant it is. Communication must be open and honest between the client and therapist, and the therapist should be able to read and attend to the client's nonverbal cues. Sometimes the nonverbal cues can help us gain more insight, like I said earlier, than the client may be verbalizing. Additionally, the therapist must clearly express their emotions, and what they're expressing must be genuine of how they're actually feeling. So with coworkers, that's the next area we're going to talk about. Emotional intelligence helps us be a good team member. We will be working as a team with other healthcare professionals all throughout our career, and it can help us with collaboration. We know as OTs how important collaboration is with our clients and with other healthcare professionals, specifically like I'm talking about now. So those with high emotional intelligence scores are able to better manage relationships between coworkers because of their intra and interpersonal skills. 
and when working to solve a problem, individuals with strong emotional intelligence skills will use creativity and flexibility while taking their own and others' emotional experience into account. So high emotional intelligence is also correlated with strong leadership skills. That's a really big thing. We talk about how important leadership is, and this class is a leadership class. So it's really important for everyone to work on their emotional intelligence. While emotional intelligence is important to consider when working with our clients and colleagues, it also has an impact on us as practitioners. The article by McKenna and Melson suggested that emotional intelligence could be a protective factor for mental and physical health. Also, it stated that the relationship between stress and mental health could be moderated by emotional intelligence. We have discussed in many courses how it's important to practice self-care and monitor our mental health, and being emotionally intelligent can help us do that. Emotional intelligence also helps reduce the likelihood of burnout. As OTs, we will encounter clients who are experiencing very difficult situations, and I know all of us want to help others, and otherwise we wouldn't have become an OT, but it's important for us to protect ourselves. Emotional intelligence helps us stay healthy mentally and emotionally, which will ultimately help us help our clients. Higher levels of emotional intelligence ability are inversely related with stress and depression. So this just means that the more emotionally intelligent a person is, the less likely they are to have depression and unhealthy stress levels. One study listed in the article I posted found that those with higher emotional intelligence levels also were more likely to be satisfied with their work. McKenna and Melson stated that there is evidence to support emotional intelligence is the most important characteristic in success, effectiveness, and superior performance for healthcare professionals. So that just reiterates the fact that emotional intelligence is so important. We are just a short time away from starting our first level two field work. Each of us have varying emotions and feelings about this, and these emotions can vary and change even depending on the day. But I have some exciting news. According to Thomas et al., emotional intelligence is positively correlated with student success in field work. Additionally, this article discussed ways emotional intelligence can be nurtured during OT school, And some of these examples included the use of role play, case studies, and active group discussion. And it said that all of these were useful in fostering soft skills, and emotional intelligence is considered a soft skill. This allows the student to use critical thinking and reasoning skills in a simulated real-world scenario, just like we will be doing when we're on field work and as a future practitioner. And we had each of these examples during our didactic learning, which I'm sure was intentional to help us improve and grow our emotional intelligence and some other skills, even before we knew how vital it was to our success. Finally, I have a Google form I would like and appreciate if everyone would fill out. Also, don't forget to take the emotional intelligence quiz on mindfuls.com and to interpret your score if you haven't done that already. Thanks for watching and stopping by to view my video. I hope you have a great day.